basically, I'm here today to talk to you about how America is undergoing some very tough economic times. But luckily, we have people like yourselves. So, everybody knows that when they turn 18, they get a flood of offers for credit cards, free money, debt, debt, debt. Consumerism and materialism are social plagues that are now as American as apple pie. But, like I said, we are in luck because we have people like yourselves, creative individuals, people who can take nothing and create something. You all have the ability to take America out of its dark economic times. If only you guys can realize your potential. So that's what I'm here to talk to you today about. Creativity, America's economic savior. And this is a really awesome picture here. Creativity, if life gives you no money for hats, make a pro hat. That's creativity. So to tell you about what I think, where we should be going, I need to tell you about where we've been. So the past is this. America became a global economic superpower because of things like industrialization. A great guy named Henry Ford invented what's called Fordism, or the assembly line. He took products that were already made and figured out a way to make them quicker, more effectively. He changed America, along with other innovators, he changed America from an agricultural-based economy to a manufacturing industrial economy. This was really incredible. And he was an engineer. He was a creative type. Back then, artists didn't have the tools that they do and have now to change the economy. But in his day and age, he was really a creative artist himself, in some ways. So, we became too comfortable with our manufacturing roots. And that is why there are cities like Detroit, Michigan. Now, let's see how they're doing these days. There it is. Detroit, Michigan, the legendary Motor City. Ouch, not doing too well. And this is because they were too slow to change and progress to the economic times. Right now, we have reset again. It means an economic reset is when everything changes. We went from an agricultural economy to an industrial one. And now, we're going from a manufacturing industrial one to what's called a knowledge-based economy. Knowledge-based. This is when we prosper off of the things we know, off of the things we can invent, the trends we can set, creative ideas, really, creativity, making something out of nothing. And this is where America excels. You know, the problem is, is that many people in the world, so-called resource gatekeepers, they don't understand that. They don't understand people like yourselves have the ability to change the frontier of America. So, I'll put it into an easy formula that even decrepit old policymakers can understand. Creativity plus, America plus creativity is greater than China. America without creativity is less than China. Now, I have nothing against China. I lived in Beijing. They have amazing creative arts. They have innovative entrepreneurs. But I guarantee you, we are the trendsetters of the world. And that is what you all need to realize. We get paid off of ideas. That's how we make money. Not, not off of what we create, the, the products we build, but we design the ideas. We think up the ideas. We export cool and hip ideas. We export cool and hip. China, well, they can build it. And so, there are amazing things like the iPhone. This is where we need to be going. This is what I would call perfect harmony. As you see, it says Apple. They say, designed by Apple in California, assembled in China. Designed by Apple. The made in China thing is out the window, out, out the door now. But, you know, this is what we need to embrace. Because otherwise, if policymakers think that manufacturing is what's going to save our economy, then it's like trying to dam up the Mississippi River with twigs. What we need to focus on is designing products, not manufacturing them or building them. And who designs them? But creative types. You know, Apple is a tech company. But why do they use the word design? Does design really go with tech? Eh. They became the largest company in the world based on the fact that they realized that they were not just developing a product. They weren't just manufacturing or making a product. They were designing a product. They were the first company come along and say, 
know what? Yes, the skill sets here are engineers, business people, and graphic designers, but artists. But we're not just engineers or skill sets. We actually are designers. We are artists, and that's a big part of what Steve Jobs believed in. I'll tell you more about that later. But like I said, they're the biggest company in the world because they saw themselves as designers, and they were able to capitalize on what's called the creative class trio. And this is artists, business people, scientists, and, and technologists all coming together. And by artists, I don't just mean fine artists or graphic artists. I mean anybody with the power to understand creativity, human interaction, emotional responses to things like color, sound, design. With all these skill sets, you can create some really interesting stuff. A good example is, like I said, Steve Jobs. He is what I would call a modern day renaissance man. He brought together artists, developers, technologists to create the products. Here's a little thing about what he believed. He really saw himself as an artist and saw Apple as being a company of artists. Here's a little clip.
They're both understanding the psychological effect of their work. And what's really interesting is that both artists and psychologists, well, they get paid for the emotional stimuli and psychological stimuli that they create in their customers. What's more interesting about artists, though, is that the products that they work on. Psychologists get paid by the hours and the day and, you know, sitting in front of their customer. Artists, however, can create a product, and products can have global dissemination within, you know, minutes, days, hours, years. They are limitless. And that's also what makes artists some of the most greatest social or economic change factors or some of the most dangerous. You think of good artists like Da Vinci or Michelangelo. They've done amazing things. They really contribute to society. But you also think of some bad ones. People like Kim Jong-il or Mao Zedong or you know, any of these other propaganda. They've used art as a form of spreading their propaganda, controlling their populace. Because this is a product that manipulates the psychology of somebody. And that's really, really powerful. In fact, it's so powerful it led to one of the worst men in the world ever in history. Hitler. Hitler was an artist. That is scary to think about. How was he able to control an entire country of individuals who were peaceful by nature, turning them into mass murderers and you know, genocide? It was because he understood how to take a psychological message and package it into a product. You have a power that's not to undermine. You creatives can build things that can change people's mindsets, can move countries to do incredible things or really dangerous things. I always say this, know your potential, know your power, and proceed with caution, ethics, and morality. Me, I'm doing what I can to try to change some of uh, art's perception in Tallahassee. But this is a small component. This is a very small component. We at Rotary Square are building a building called the Art Tech Hub. And that's where people like yourselves, artists, technologists, entrepreneurs, they can all come together and they can basically feel at home. They can collaborate. And when there's collaboration amongst different creative skill sets, that's when really interesting, happen, interesting things happen, both locally and national. And that's what I encourage you all to do. Try to, try to take part in your own type of collaboration. What I really want you all to focus on is this. These four things. Number one, creativity is extremely powerful. It is what we as a nation are relying on. Creativity is powerful both economically and socially. Use that power wisely. But don't ever let yourself be pigeonholed as just a mere artist. Secondly, support. Find people who support you. Because as an artist in this mainstream society, you'll be viewed as you know, someone on the fringe. And if you're trying to create something from nothing, I guarantee you, until you're successful, you'll be looked at as someone a bit you know, crazy. I'm very fortunate to have a very supportive girlfriend. I encourage you all to go out there and find support team as well. Whether they look like you or not, whether they're family or friends or just colleagues. Number three, collaborate. Collaborate with people who don't look like you who are also creative. So I imagine in this room right now, there's probably a lot of performance artists. Well, that's great, you know, but I'd say go to the business school. Find people in a suit and talk to them. Talk to people, computer geeks behind, you know, in the lab, wherever they are. This is where some really interesting things happen. Interesting things happen. When people of creative skill sets collaborate. And number four, finally, is try your best to be your own Renaissance man or woman. This means just because you specialize in one field, maybe art, maybe performance art, maybe graphic arts. Go out there and figure out these other creative skill sets. Learn programming. Learn, learn one basic thing about programming. Uh, go out there and read a business book. Figure out everything you can from a creative perspective.
because you are not just an artist. You are a Renaissance man or woman. Because in your, you should view the world from those collaborative perspectives. How does this affect the world economically? How does this, how people feel about this? How can this be disseminated globally? How can it be really as effective as possible in getting my message, my product, out there? And in many ways, you're all entrepreneurs in your own life. So, to sum it all up, America is going through hard times. We are reliant on creativity to be our economic savior. And quite honestly, you all as creatives are the rock stars of our generation. 